Oh man, this tire is totally wasted. When you want to get the shot, but no wet feet. Clicky clacky clicky clacky clicky clack. There were some strange things. The windows are sealed with tape. Three photographers on an adventurous road trip through northern Norway. Steep mountains. Rugged islands. Deep fjords. Perfect conditions for Team Hawkland. It's only drizzling. The heavy rain is over, luckily. We are at the first spot for today. A beautiful white beach, turquoise sea, mountains in the back. What more could you ask for? A bit of structure in the sky would be nice, of course. Everything is still gray, the light is flat, but maybe that will change later. We happen to be here on this beach more by accident, because we simply booked our accommodation somewhere on the way, but didn't exactly know where beforehand. So we looked it up on Google Maps and discovered this beach. And it actually looks a bit like Haukla Beach. The challenge was that you first had to find out what was interesting. Because when it's so beautiful, there are so many possibilities for taking pictures. And as a photographer, it is then the art and in the end also taste, which decides what exactly you put in the picture, what you want to show and how much of it you want to show and so on. A good tip when you arrive at a new location. Just take the camera and look through the viewfinder. Now you can see exactly what you get at your specific focal length. I found a really cool foreground over here. Stones, grass and turquoise water and mountains in the background. That looks great. The only problem is the rain has decreased but the wind has increased. When the wind is strong and you don't want the grass to move, you need a short shutter speed. You have to pay attention to that. I'm going to walk around the beach a bit to get an overview because often you're in one place and then shoot many photos, it starts to rain and maybe three meters away would be a much better perspective but you missed it. And when the foreground catches, then I start taking photos. Oh, hello! A jellyfish! And here's another jellyfish. And I think over there is a good foreground location. And that's where we're going now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's the wave game I want. That one. Nice, yeah. If you want the shot without wet feet, you have to stand on a rock. Camera is down here, hold the tripod so it doesn't fall because waves can be very strong. And my shutter speed is a fifth, sixth, eighth of a second depending on what I'm doing. I play with the shutter speed a lot, it really depends on how I want the waves to appear. And I also use an ND filter to have a bit more of exposure room. Thing is, my filter is always misty because of the wind and the splashes from the waves and that means I need a lot of cleaning and the microfiber cloth in your sleeve is perfect for this. So let's clean the lens. Now, I've been taking pictures back there all the time. With stones, no stones, with grass, no grass and some long exposures of course. Handheld. The others are over there and I'll have a look now what they are up to because yeah, they spent quite a long time back there and so it has to be good I guess. Oh nice composition Lucas. Yeah, a little bit of foreground. Nice. Wait, I'll show it through the camera. 
Whoa! That looks good, man. Yes! I was at this water hole and it looked very cool, especially with a polarizing filter. So take a look, with and without polarizer. I like both very much. Write in the comments what you like better. Very rich, no reflection or with reflection. I usually do both and can later decide on the computer what I like better. Rather take more photos and then have the choice later. That is exactly what I enjoy the most. Forgetting about time, being at one spot, trying out different things, waiting for the next wave, and just enjoying the time and the photography. It's been a wonderful time we've had over here. What a cool location and we really needed that after that flop yesterday with all the rain. And I think we took two or three hours non-stop photos. The pictures turned out to be amazing. Yeah, I could definitely spend more time here. You really noticed the mood rise and everyone was hyped to continue and discover new motives. The tire problem. Oh man, this tire is totally wasted. I hope we don't get a flat tire somewhere in the middle of the night. That would be extremely bad and cause a big problem. Let's hope we can get away with it and reach Lofoten safely. I mean, such a rental car here in the north is not that cheap. Since the next rental car station with a possible exchange vehicle is more than three hours away at Lofoten and only a stone's throw from our next accommodation, we decided to continue the route carefully and according to plan, keeping our fingers crossed for us and our tire. The motivation on day number four was of course a completely different one. Because you were really motivated by the first pictures of the beach already. We took many different pictures and even some more along the way. That pushes you of course. You're in a flow and much more motivated to get out of the car at the next spot. One thing caught our attention in particular. It was a small bay with a red fisherman's cottage and the tide was low and yellow algae were peeping out. Yeah, too much Red Bull or what? <laughs> there are many ways to photograph this scene. In front of me are yellow algae that you can use as a foreground. A colorful accent. Look at these beautiful details, like this door lock. Or take a picture diagonal. There are many different possibilities. The complete house or details. We are in Norway, it's relatively cold and it's important to keep the batteries close to the body to protect them from discharging with body heat. And I use a pretty cool system. We have the small photo backpack, specially integrated in the jackets, that you have the batteries close to your body. So when my battery is empty, which is the case now, I have the full batteries up here in the top compartment. And I now have three, they are fully charged and the battery in my camera is empty. I'll take it out and put it in the lower compartment. You can do it the other way around, of course, but I know tonight, aha, lower compartment, empty batteries, and upper compartment, there are the fully charged. Maybe, maybe not at all. And that way you could photograph all day long.
we actually wanted to go straight through to the Lofoten, three and a half hours, and then take some pictures in the evening. But we found so many motives on the way, we stopped so often, every 20 minutes there was something on the side of the road that caught our attention. Uh, do you do an exposure simulation? Ah, uh, yes. A series of exposures. <laughs> it's and you pull down the computer. Uh, sure, I let the computer do the math. A uh, foreground makes build <laughs> gesund. And what is about the foreground? A uh, foreground makes the picture healthy. Ah, uh, yes, it makes sense. It makes total sense, eh? Yeah, what a nice foreground this is. Just look at the plant, how it glows, soft light, beautiful. Even if the sky is falling down, even if the sky is falling down, the sky is falling down. We'll be late today, but it's worth it. Yeah, when we looked at the clock, it was somehow 4 to 5 p.m. We are still not set off to Lofoten, but we're still at the same region where we started in the morning. We drive this road several times a year for our guided photo trips to the Lofoten. But today, at daylight and without snow, completely different views and motives. We are now photographing a stream that you would not see in winter due to the snow. That looks pretty cool already with the eye, but in photos much more because there are boulders in the stream everywhere and the water winds around these boulders in the flow direction and I like the dramatic sky with it. It's super exciting. Yeah, so <laughs> it's worth making a pee, pee stop every now and then. just flowed. Everything worked out perfectly. It may be because it didn't rain cats and dogs in the morning so that we could warm up a little. I can't tell exactly, but it was good. We were all hyped by the trip, by the motives of the day and we even pushed ourselves a bit more because the guy said we have a big house for the last three days. Big house, villa, many rooms, many beds. Yeah, it wasn't quite what we had expected. There were some strange things going on in the house. Firstly, the beds. One bed, actually my bed, is in the storage room where I can't really close the door. Good night! Oh, <laughs> doesn't close, huh? The windows are sealed with tape. Professional! It smelled a bit funny. Yeah, that's our home for the next three nights. Looks like scratches. Absolute horror! Watch your head and down to the basement. But who goes first? Thanks for watching. What would you do? Drive or stay? Write it in the comments. Three more episodes left of the road trip, but only one more week 
for the early bird discounts for US customers at www.hawkland.us. Then we ship all your pre-orders to your home and start regular shipping at a regular price. And also get your 9 Team Hawkland Lightroom presets we created in Norway completely for free as a gift. The link is in the description. If you haven't seen the latest episodes, you can watch them here. And there you can see the next episode when it uploads next Friday at 6 p.m. EDT here on this YouTube channel.